Nordic Rebels Season 3, Skills for the Future. Um, when was the last time you actually checked you know, these lists telling you what kind of skills you need for the future? So you need creativity, analytical thinking, interdisciplinary knowledge, emotional intelligence, leadership skills, technology skills, skill skills, the lists, they just go on. But is it really about like ticking the boxes or establishing something long term, something more positive or something actually that changes in your body? That's what season three is going to be all about. So enjoy First the ride. Of all, I'm a human being. So I just I just wanted to give an example of, of how we also try to perhaps take our own medicine. So this is this is a result of an unconference that we did. So um, recently we turned 40 as an organization. Yeah. So you know, 40 is, is the new 30s. But but anyway, and uh, as part of our birthday, we thought we should have a conference uh, to talk about you know what should shape the conversation for the next 40 years on design. And uh, basically we were like, okay, are we going to do another conference, you know, with a number of keynote speakers and an audience? Because what people actually want to do is they want to have a conversation. And, uh, and we also wanted to, you know, uh, also to foster the fact that everybody is an expert. So what we did was that we, we um, invited a lot of people, 80 amazing people signed up to an unconference that had no program at all. It only had a title, what are we supposed to talk about for the next 40 years on design. 80 people came, then there was just, you know, there was a short introduction saying we are here for a couple of hours, you are all experts, what would you like to discuss? And then uh, people started, but I would like to talk about what are the roles of uh, aesthetics within design in the future when we are solving more and more problems that are related to systems and services, intangible things. Or somebody say, you know, how does IA affect, you know, the design process or whatever. And then people was like, ah, I want to talk about that as well. And I want to talk about that. And, you know, we just created a number of groups and people just sat down and they started the conversation. And there was actually, you know, and they were trying to, this is actually sort of the reflections for that conversation. There was not supposed to be an end goal. We just wanted to facilitate an experience of, you know, and having everybody to have that sense that, we are all experts, mm. so we basically back to the vision of the Danish Science Center, you know, empower people. Mm. So how can we empower people understanding that they all have something to bring to the table and they all know something uh, that could, others could benefit from? So this, is, this is, so this is basically a result. And now we think it looks nice and <laughs> so we thought it might well stay on the wall. <laughs> Why not stay on the wall? I think it's great. Yeah. What's your favorite one? That is that is a good question. I think this is not my favorite one. <laughs> we are all designers. So uh, my name is Christina Melander, yeah. and I am uh, one of the program directors at the Danes Design Center, and also head of the Danes Design Award. So the Danes Design Center, we have uh, we have one here vision and that is that we empower uh, businesses, people and society to shape the next. And by shaping the next we mean that could be the next product, service, system, strategy, maybe even the next business model. Uh, we are here in this amazing building called Blux in mm. the center of Copenhagen. That is a building that fosters a lot of 
companies, startups and organizations within architecture, technology, design and basically new ideas. So when you say you are shaping the next event, it can go from service to product to organization structure. Absolutely. How is it possible to use design thinking as one thing, as a solution for everything? Is it a solution for everything? Uh, okay, that is, that is maybe one of the most interesting questions. You know, can design solve everything? Well, at least maybe not everything, but uh, it's definitely a key key component. I think you know what is uh, the general thing when we talk about design thinking, whether it's products and services and systems, is you know design is is a way of developing. Mm -hmm. So what are the basics here? It's the uh, it's the people centered focus is the holistic approach to solving problems is uh, getting people to collaborate with different skills it's uh, and it's actually also putting shape to things you know uh, to make things you know work the best way for people to actually go to use it why is it necessary to have that mental change now the shift now the world is changing so fast i think you know you still you know hear all the the headlines, you know, disruption. Now mm. we're not talking so much about disruption. We talk about uh, digitalization, you know, technology, uh, understanding globalization in new ways. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, uh, I just uh, saw uh, an old presentation I made <laughs> uh, yesterday that I made a couple of years ago, and just the fact that you know it took more than 80 years for the telephone to reach 100 million people. It took two years yeah. for Instagram to reach. 100 million people so you know what does that mean to businesses you know that sort of speed and that sort of uh, you know that everybody is connected you know via the internet mm. uh, it is it is uh, that is the huge challenge to corporations nowadays that they completely need, need a new mindset it's funny that you bring up this specific example because i was yesterday finishing a presentation for something else mm -hmm. And it is about how organizations need to change structures and the way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And I, at one point I had this beautiful sentence, it's, you know, there's this one hour of thinking process, thought process, and it ends up in one shot, just one sentence. And it was the question, what happens if everyone runs faster than you can move? I think that is interesting because running faster I don't think is the uh, is the answer mm -hmm. is jumping higher because you know running faster is to me is something about keep doing what you used to do but just faster and basically about you know so okay somebody is cheaper than me mm -hmm. then I have to be even cheaper you know somebody have a better quality I have yeah. to have an even better quality you know things like that so you need to jump higher and uh, and I think that is the shift in mindset so you need to do something different <laughs> How, how are you developing and changing and transforming, and transforming an organization in a time where you don't know what will happen in one year? You, even though you try to map you know, your competitive landscape, that will change you know, tomorrow perhaps. You don't even know who you you're actually... You don't even know who you are, you have to look, watch out for. Exactly. And um, you don't know when a technology be very affordable, so that, that will suddenly change things. So how do you cope with that? Uh, I know one thing is that, that I can't predict anything anymore. Uh, so what I need to do is I need to be curious. I need to try things out. I need to experiment. I need to, to, uh, to, to challenge and, and try things with many different skills and people's views on things. And, and still it's a challenge because how do you then do that? But I think it's, it's, it's a complete change of mindset, you know, as, as somebody is, who is leading an organization, I, I'm saying it a little black and white, no, but you're, yeah. not, you're no longer the one who needs to know it all. You need to facilitate your employees to do their best you need, and you need to, to allow them to do things in a different ways and you need to to allow them to go on a journey where they don't know what the end result is. So, so how do you measure that that is good for your business to do?
you should be confident in being maybe not insecure but then curious i mm -hmm. mean and feel confident in not knowing the answers but you know allowing yourself and your employee to ask all sorts of relevant and irrelevant and crazy questions you know i mean uh, to have i think to have curious employees that are who wants to challenge you yeah. is is I mean, is if you show insecurities they are able to show them as well yeah and i think in many ways you know also when you when you foster collaboration between different skills this is maybe banal but when, when companies need to change or need to you know have a workshop around what what should be our next strategy they should you know often they should go out of their own company. They, it shouldn't take place in your own mm. company and you should perhaps ask somebody from not your company to facilitate it because you need to make sure that everybody in the room are on the same level. If you do it home <laughs> in, the, in the CEO's office around his meeting table, he will still you know, sit at the end of the table. But you need, so you need to change the environment around people to actually foster that everybody uh, dare to to speak up their mind and ask the questions, and I think it's 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 an example here at the Danish Design Center because we're actually trying to preach, or to act, act the way we yeah. preach, and and uh, so one thing you often hear our CEO saying is you know maybe the best best questions is from 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 one of our interns, and I mean the best thing we can do is that we pay attention to whoever says, and the best argument should always win, and it's probably not my argument. How do you actually facilitate this kind of thinking and structure and organization? Well, I think that we try to be as, what do you say, flat? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we try to be an, uh, as flat as an organization as possible. Uh, that, you know, that everybody is is uh, you know bringing their best to the table that nobody in particular has the final word mm. uh, that is something i mean it sounds kind of banal but we are actually really trying to do it and as i mentioned earlier that 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 we we, we say it out loud very often that the the best argument will be the winning argument and that argument can come for everybody from everybody in the organization we we, I mean, our interior design, the way the way we uh, we uh, we work here. I mean, nobody owns their own desk, mm. so uh, you you just grab a desk when you're here because there's no need for everybody to have a desk because it's very very rare that everybody is actually here because we out you know running <coughs> workshops or you know having presentations either here in Denmark or or internationally. Um, and then we, we try to have different settings that kind of support, you know, whether these are projects or whether we have a brainstorming session, uh, whether we need to have, you know, and a very informal uh, dialogue. So, you know, it may be again, it's, it's you know, on paper it sounds easy, but, but having, you know, it's having people to sit, sit in a couch instead of a, a, at a, a formal desk could bring something to the table uh, to have some sort of a smaller you know uh, rooms where you can just have you know uh, where you can put in a project and just have uh, you know crazy ideas on the wall and and things like that is i always just have to say because i have tried to change yeah that it's 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 it changes things dramatically that you can work in very very various ways uh, either if you are having to concentrate because you are writing a mm. brief or a concept or whether you're having a, 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 a brainstorming session or whether you're having a decision-making session or a, so just to really think about that you that you um, that you support different ways of, of, of working and work across disciplines and skills I mean that sounds beautiful especially working yes. in flat hierarchies um, it sounds so beautiful that I that somebody might think actually it's a little bit too beautiful. Yeah, it, it, that comes with a certain set of challenges, right? Yeah. Whether it's uh, an ego challenge from the CEO that you probably don't have, but um, 
just very ambitious. Yeah. So what are what do you need to look out for in order to actually successfully implement flat hierarchies yeah. that CEO in turn and senior management can sit next together and actually bounce ideas back and forth? Yeah. It comes down to people and to what degree you feel comfortable mm -hmm. actually uh, not thinking so much about, you know, what is your title, but just, you know, who you are and also always understanding that everybody, basically everybody, is an expert in something. So everybody can bring something new to the table or at least challenging you. And I think, you know, having also a very creative environment also helps for instance, our trainees, people who have been here for a couple of months, actually, you know, pumping the question to some of us who's been around for a long time, or our CEO, just saying, you know, mm. I hear what you're saying, but I'm not sure I really understand. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, um, so I think it, yeah, so it has a lot to do, as you say, with, you know, who you are as a person. Do you need to be the one who always has the final word? So I think it's, as you say, on paper, it's romantic, mm. but I also think so. So it's 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 not an either or. It's a, it's a both <laughs> and. I think you know you know you, yeah. you both need to have a very flat organization, but also to be honest, you also by the end at some point at the end of the day, somebody has to take it make a decision, and and uh, and I think you know um, that is I mean that should be you know top management the CEO uh, yeah. uh, at some point he is the, the one personal responsibility. Yeah, who's reporting to the board. Uh, but for him to be able to make the right decisions, he needs to foster an environment of a flat organization where he actually gets, gets the, the best out of whoever he is paying to be in his company. Shall we get rid of? Titles or roles? <laughs> we should perhaps get rid of titles, but not roles. What is the difference? To me, role is actually the action of what mm. you're doing, and the title is is just a name. Mm. Roles is, you know, a, a very conscious understanding of your role in a team. Uh, what is your perhaps your expert skill mm -hmm. and I think um, so I think in and, and today to have a role I most of us uh, or at least that would be my recommendation mm -hmm. is you know we can talk about the t-shaped people but we we'll have something where you know you're very skilled in an area you're perhaps you know the toughest engineer or the most creative designer but at the same time you are also having a, you know more generic skills that you have a huge understanding of other Discipline. So I think your role is is actually understanding that that everybody in a group has a saying. Uh, just for the people who don't understand what the T shape or X shape mm -hmm. is. Yeah. But it's, it, 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 but it, to me, it, the T shaped and X shaped is to have a combination of different skills. So so yeah. you can be you can be trained from the business school, you can be trained from you know the University of Engineers or the design school or anthropologist or coding or whatever. So you have you have a very you have deep skill uh, and then at the same time you have skills in collaboration mm -hmm. and in uh, in uh, project management or you know processes. So a more generic skills uh, but basically what I mean by that is that you are trained and you're skilled in collaborating and and I think uh, that is is becoming more and more and more important. A lot of people ask the question what skills should I learn mm -hmm. and if friends come to me and ask me that I always respond just the ones you want to learn. Mm -hmm. Just uh, mm -hmm. passionate about. It doesn't need to bring in money. I think the pursuing of different skills at the same time mm -hmm. already will uh, bring you forward in life because then you are forced to inter uh, interact with other people, right? Yes. So. Yeah. I completely agree. But I think also, I mean, now working at the Danish Science Center, I, <laughs> I would also, I would not, I would not encourage everybody to become designers. But I think now when we talk about design thinking, it's, I mean, one thing is to be the, the creative person who can actually design 
Uh, but I think, okay. it, but design thinking is, is to a large degree a mindset. Mm -hmm. And I think to have that sort of mindset, that you can have a design thinking mindset, whether you are an engineer, coder, or an anthropologist, or a business person, uh, because the design thinking mindset, as we talked about, is you know having you know starting with the users, what makes sense to the people, whether they are your clients, your customers, or you know the patients at a hospital, if you are <laughs> the doctor, uh, and then you know and then understanding the problem from the different angles, because I think I think. What everybody is, is is challenged by today is actually identifying what is what is actually the problem we are going to solve, mm. or what is actually the opportunity here. And I think to a problem there can be many different solutions, but actually pinpointing down what is that problem that is that is impossible for for I think just from one skill set yeah. to to uh, to identify to identify. And I think it, it takes many different views. Keeping the idealism and at the same time being aware of the fact that there are some conditions that kind of shape reality at the, as it is right now. Yes. So how do you not demotivate people by saying this? Dream, but don't dream too big. No, no, but dream and dream big, but, but, but just, I mean, but just also understand, you know, mm -hmm. the game you're in. And, uh, and I also think, you know, uh, we start talking about, you know, the transformation of organizations that, you know, even though, even though, you know, we have more and more business leaders now understanding that they need to change and, and they need to foster, you know, non-silo collaborations and bringing new skills, it's, it's, it's still difficult, you know, on an everyday business because, and how do you organize the development of your next mm -hmm. business model and at the same time, you know, maintaining your core business and challenging your core business. I mean, it's not easy and, and, and still it's, you know, how do you not convince but motivate that change from within as an employee in a co collaboration mm -hmm. and the board and the CEO. And I think it's, 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 that is again, dream big, but also try to keep an eye on the small changes that you can start by doing because, you know, I almost hate saying, but but you know, the small fast success successes. So you know, it, mm. this is your dream. I mean, this is where I want to be in three years. This is where I think our company should be. But if that is the dream in three years, you know, then you know, looking back, what could I start by doing? <laughs> you know, in small what steps are the that yeah, what are the steps, that I need? yeah, the steps ahead and and start you know making those small, very concrete, uh, you know results mm. that can start changing, you know, the change of the KPIs and the mindset and the decision-making processes. And I, li I like the analogy of the game, mm. because <laughs> everyone loves it's playing. It's much more fun to play a oh, game. Of course, <laughs> of course. I mean, but you play a game because you want to play the game, because it makes fun. At the same time, the game still challenges you. There are conditions mm. that you need to adapt to, and you n need to learn new things, new skills. Mm -hmm according to the conditions, according to the challenges that you are facing. Yeah. So it kind of develops organi organic, almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the same time, you always think of how can you cheat the game? <laughs> yeah. Because you want to reach it faster. Yeah. But in order to cheat the game, you need yeah. to understand the game. Yeah. You need to understand what kind of roles are there. Yeah. Maybe even a little bit of yeah. psychology, sociology. Yeah. But maybe the cheating is the innovation. <laughs> I think so. I mean, because I think it's is is uh, is you know it's to ch challenge the boundaries. I mean, and and I think you know also the mindset is if you are if you are insecure whether you can do something or not, the easy thing would be to to then just say probably not. <laughs> but but uh, but I think it's 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 uh, the cheating. It sounds wrong when you say it out loud. For you, for me, it's, it's <laughs> a po very positive <laughs> connotation. You found a <laughs> no, but 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 it is positive in yeah. that sense that cheating is actually changing, you know, the status quo or the way of doing. Exactly. Yeah. And perhaps you know that brings you not faster ahead, but it makes you jump oh, yeah. to a better place. It's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs>
Is there anything that uh, we haven't talked about that w where you mm, still think? No, but I just think uh, there's, a, there's a reason why you're here. It's, it's of course, of, of the Nordic Rebels, who also was one of, of the winners of the amazing Danish Design Award, <laughs> who celebrates the difference design can make. And, 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 and of course, I was not part of the jury, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm a huge fan. And basically, I'm a huge fan because uh, Again, Nordic Rebels is also, you know, challenging the existing, you know, you are fostering collaborations between different skills and between different uh, educational organizations. So actually you're fostering at a very early stage what is needed, you know, <laughs> when they graduate. And just having that understanding, and I remember, you know, from, I'm from the business mm -hmm. school and I even, even I have a master in design management, I, to a certain degree I was like, those engineers and the, yeah, yeah, the designers, but you know, having the opportunity to start that conversation, and not just a conversation, but actually just you know, get down to a challenge and start trying to solve it together, get that understanding mm -hmm. of, of what people are bringing to the table, the roles they can play. It's, you know, then you are not just running fast, and you actually start jumping. Mm -hmm. And right now, actually, you have the privileged situation of challenging the exact Nordic rebel that you just praised. Yeah. Yeah. What do, do you want to give them some challenges, some final challenges, some things to think about? Just some. You I have the direct communication. I, I think uh, even though I don't, I don't know the Nordic rebels into detail. Or I don't know if you're already doing what I'm supposed to say right now. But I'm going to say right now is that when you have had a program, I think that to really have an a reflection about so if I am the engineer and you are the designer and somebody else is the anthropologist mm. have a reflection of you know what was my role what do what did I bring to the table mm. what is what is uh, what is my part of the equation of actually moving things forward or solving a problem and and what didn't I know so, so such a hard question. It is hard, but it's super, and you you never get to the final answer. Mm. But I think to to have that final reflection of you know what 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 are, what are my role here, my skill set, and and how was I an expert here, and how was I not? And what did I learn from others?